Merry Christmas. Christmas in July. Trying to make it as Christmassy as I can. How are you? What are you up to? Say hi. Let me know you're watching. Oh, gosh, it's been a long day. So we look to see who's popping on. Oh, there's a few of you. Hi. Got my Santa hat tonight. <clears throat> hope you're in a Christmas in the Christmas spirit say hi if you want me to be able to see your name like I'm doing with Nat now um, just click on the link in the comment in the um, description and uh, just lets me share your avatar as well as the comment ho 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 to you too Nat how is everyone keeping warm in Melbourne of course we're again Still in lockdown. Hey Sharon. Which is uh, getting, a, I'm a bit over it to be honest, but I hope everyone's well. It's, it's not easy, is it? Obviously everyone in Australia is uh, going through it, but um, it just feels a little bit never ending at the moment. Merry Christmas in July to you. We'll get started shortly. A few of you jumping on. If you are planning to sew along with me tonight, um, feel free to cut out the fabric pieces. I'm going to show you a bit of a trick with the batting, um, but I just didn't want to do all the cutting because it's pretty much the same on camera. So I've sort of done it ahead of time. But if you want to sew along with me, get onto that now because I'll jibber jabber a little bit and you'll be able to catch up. I agree with Suzette. Lockdown is so boring. I, look, the only positive that's coming out of this for me this time is that homeschooling is going a lot smoother. <laughs> So I think my son's more used to it, I'm more used to it, my partner's more used to it. Um, it's been a lot more pleasant, less yelling, less shouting. Hey Dorothy. Just checking to make sure I haven't missed any comments. Awesome. Uh, so if you're new to the page, uh, the admins, we go live every Thursday at 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. So. Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and uh, we go through a live uh, uh, project, um, hopefully typically something you want to know more about, you know, we try to obviously pay attention to what's being chatted about on the page, and um, you know, as well as what's seasonal or topical, uh, or maybe what's new, um, and then we give you the chance of course to, um, you know, jump in and interact and ask questions and all sorts of fun things. Hey, all the way from Hamilton, New Zealand, kia ora. Good evening, Gail. Someone's saying, is less coffee and wine being consumed during lockdown? Is less coffee and wine consumed during lockdown? I'd probably say yes for me this time round. Um, there was definitely a lot more wine and coffee consumed last time. <laughs> um, awesome. Look, thanks everyone for joining. So yes, so live every Thursday. Um, just a couple of reminders as well. We have got, we're so close to 30,000 uh, new members, which is amazing. Um, and to celebrate, we've got three fabulous five prize packs to give away. Just search hashtag cricket for Australians 30 K in the page, and you'll see the week one competition, which finishes on, I want to say Sunday or Monday night. It's in the post. You can enter as many times as you like. You just need to share the love on social media. Um, and then take a copy, screenshot that and just post it with 25 words or less why you want to win that pack. But the uh, week one, we're giving away a fabulous iron-on pack worth, I think, $117. Um, then we've got a fabulous um, infusible ink pack to give away next week. And then when we um, reach 30,000, which should be pretty much in week three, going to give away an easy press mini and a mat and some other goodies as well so we're so excited and this is just purely to say thank you you can enter as many times as you like you can enter every week as well um so hope you guys get behind that and um yeah and good luck someone one of you is going to win Someone's glad that they joined their live. Thank you. Um, if you come in halfway through, if you've just joined now, don't worry. All of our lives are stored in the page afterwards and you can watch it at your leisure. Sorry, self-adhesive pack is week one. Thank you, Natalie. And someone wants a job at Cricket Australia. 
So I don't know if that's referencing us because we certainly don't work at cricket. Um, but uh, obviously we love cricket. All right, let's get into it. So today, um, something I've been wanting to make for a while and but haven't, the fabulous uh, bowl koozie. So I'll just hold it up to camera. Um, so these are designed, um, for me it's all about, you know, probably going to heat my soup up whether it's in a pot or in the microwave and then I'm going to pop that hot uh, bowl with my hot soup into the koozie and then I've got something that's going to protect me um, while I'm eating. Now, um, you can potentially microwave these. So the pattern in Design Space does say that uh, it is potentially microwavable. Personally, I don't think I would, um, just because I think it might have to be in there. It's not like a wheat bag or something which you're heating up for you know 30 seconds. It could be in there for quite some time. It's going to get really hot. And uh, I mean, I'd just be cautious of, or at least watch it because of course you don't want it to overheat and potentially catch fire. If you are going to put them in the microwave, a couple of things to be mindful of. Um, obviously you want to use fabric that is 100% cotton. Likewise with the batting, you want that also to be 100% cotton. Now there is a product um, available at Spotlight called Wrap and Zap um, and that's specifically made, you know, 100% okay to go in the microwaves. Just ask at the Spotlight Haberdashery, they'll be able to help you. Um, because the other thing you have to, to watch out for, even with batting, it may be 100% cotton, but it may also include a scrim. And the scrim's what sort of kind of holds that loose batting together. And sometimes that may not be 100% cotton. So just be mindful of that. The other thing too, which someone mentioned on my post when I was posting about making these the other night. Someone's loving my hat, Merry Christmas, thank you. Um, was uh, to use 100% cotton um, thread as well, which to be honest, I do mostly because I do a lot of quilting. So I like to use cotton um, uh, thread when I'm doing that. But yeah, don't use polyester um, thread if you're gonna pop it in the microwave. Um, but I made the first one the other day, it's super cute. I did, my plan was to make it out of Christmas fabric as Nat mentioned last week. I did make a liar of myself. I actually didn't have any Christmas fabric on hand, but there's a bit of a story behind this and I'll show you the fabrics that I'm using. Um, these are gonna be gifts for my mother-in-law. She's based in Melbourne, born and bred. Um, actually, I'll show you now. This fabric, and I'll show you this one. So basically you have an outer and an inner piece, although saying that they are fully reversible and I really love that as well. Um, Great for using up scraps as well. So you just need two 12 inch pieces of your inner and outer, and then likewise for the batting. But uh, Margaret, my mother-in-law is Melbourne born and bred. So I found this um, fabric years ago, which has um, got a tram design. And then this one is um, all the different suburbs in Melbourne. So it's got South Yarra and Middle Park, Glen Iris, you name it, they're all on there. So I just thought well, this would be a nice little Christmas gift. I may give it to her in the winter months because obviously it's cold and it's soup weather. Um, but that was my sort of Christmassy sort of link, um, hence why I also put the hat on tonight. And the reason I did this one is because she has three grandchildren, uh, grandsons, including mine, and I uh, figured, you know, when she's at home having soup, they're, you know, when we're not in lockdown, she may well have one of those grandkitties with her and, you know, this is a nice little boy sort of design. Um, you know, it's got some yachts and submarines and not that girls aren't into that, but I just thought, you know, that the two of them would go really nicely together. For gifts, you know, whether you're selling them or giving away as gifts, you know, you could pop a bowl in there, get like a nice little cheap bowl from anywhere or a nice expensive bowl, you know, fill it up with lollies, wrap it in cellophane and off you go, really, really special gift. And as I say, you'll see how easy they are to make. So I'll pop this one over here and I'll just have a check of the comments. Uh, what is a koozie? I don't know if anyone's uh, added to that, but yeah, I think it's an American term koozie. Although um, Jules used to say she's Canadian, she used to say it was an Australian thing. But anyway, that's what a bowl koozie is in design space. Now, as I mentioned, you just need, and I've cut these out already, a 12 by 12 piece for your one, one, one piece, and likewise for your uh, other piece, inner or outer, and likewise for the batting. And I've already attached one piece of batting uh, to this, but we are gonna cut uh, another piece of batting out now, and I'm gonna show you a little trick of mine. 
Um, other things that you'll need, of course, the fabric mat. Um, don't look at this one too closely. It's incredibly well used. Um, but fabric mat for cutting your cotton pieces. Now, you know, don't be too concerned if, the, if they start to lose their stick a little bit because you can, as long as the fabric's kind of attaching, because of the rotary blade, it's not dragging, it's literally rolling like the rotary over the fabric. You can get away with the fabric mat not being too sticky. In fact, I've got um, fabric mats where that, well, even this one, where the um, top sheet, protective sheet, is barely sticking to it, and I'm still using it over and over again. But you should definitely try and remove as many of the um, threads after cutting as possible. Um, some of the other tools that I use, so I've got the Cricut sewing kit, so I've got the rotary blade, which is amazing. It's got a nice little safety feature, sort of pops out and then closes. And that's really good just for trimming up your pieces to the correct size um, for when you go to, um, you know, load it onto the mat and of course cut it with the Cricut. Scissors, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, I also have, and again in the sewing kit, you've got the little tweezers, so that's great for getting off all those extra uh, threads rather than using your fingers. So try not to touch the fabric mat in particular with your fingers because oils from your hands and everything uh, can impact the stickiness of that particular mat. Um, Dare I say it, also the unpicker. Um, hopefully you don't have to use it, but I mean, typically when I'm sewing at least once, I need to get out my unpicker. <laughs> hopefully not tonight. And the sewing kit as well comes with this fabulous little um, sort of snipper cutter thing, which is great for just getting really close to those edges and just snipping off um, any loose threads. That's really handy. Um, the other thing's a brayer, so when you're putting on your, um, you'll see me when I put on my batting onto my mat, I can just roll it out and just make sure it's lovely and stuck down there. Again, really good if your fabric mat is not quite as sticky. This just makes sure it's adhering as best as it can be. Uh, other than that, I've got some pins, and you've seen me use these before, but wonder clips. So I find wonder clips are really useful, um, particularly if you're quilting uh, or if you're working with thick materials, which these are once we turn them out. It's just a lot easier to hold um, the various pieces together. Um, so, so that's that. We are now going to move on to cutting uh, one piece of the batting. So as I say, I've cut everything else. Yes, the design is in, um, in design space. If you search Koozie, K-O-O-Z-E-I, you'll find it in the list. It is a maker project, so if you don't have a maker, you won't find it. Um, if you have multiple machines, make sure you've got makers selected as your machine, otherwise, again, you won't obviously see it. So, batting. Now, I can use the fabric mat to cut my batting, but I'm going to show you a little trick. And you can see I've got a blue mat, not as uh, filthy as my fabric mat, but you're thinking, oh, that's weird, that's a bit wacky. And the reason being, it actually doesn't really matter for this process what mat you use, but I, I think the blue works really, really well. Batting is really, really fluff, fl bl 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 fluffy, really fuzzy, and it's going to leave a lot of fuzz, even like by the time I finish this project tonight, uh, there'll be fuzz everywhere, like it's on my phone, you know, just little, little fine fuzz. And that's obviously going to stick to your fabric mat, and that's going to be really difficult to get off. So here's a little trick for you. All right, so taking off my protective cover, and I've got transfer tape. All right, Cricut transfer tape. So now I'm putting this on my mat. Now I've got the backing side up and the transfer side down. So I'm sure all of you are having a bit of a light bulb moment. Hopefully some of you didn't know this trick already. You could use this for fabric as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sit up a wee bit and I'm just going to pop my transfer tape down there and I'm going to use my brayer as well. Make sure the brayer is great for anything that you're trying to stick down, um, particularly if it's, um, again, if the mat's starting to lose its stick, it's uh, really, really useful. And yes, so Nat's saying this is a great trick for cutting felt, so anything that's really fuzzy and potentially going to leave a lot of um, debris and that on your mat. So now I'm going to just take off the backing. Make sure I'm getting just the backing here. 
and so I'll peel that off. I'm not going to try and put that back together, but you could certainly obviously try and reuse this. I did this um, the other night, obviously for my test one and every other piece, you can keep reusing this. You don't need to do this every single time. And then, so now that's sticky, okay? But it's protecting the actual mat itself. And I can just pop my batting on there. Okay. And then get my, you can just smooth it out with your hands or as I say, get your brayer and just pop that down. And now it's firmly stuck to my mat, but it's not going to leave all that um, fuzz behind. So I'm just going to bring up Cricut Design Space. I've got the project open. And I'm just going to cut one of the layers. Now the batting is slightly smaller or a different slight shape to the outer. I'll just make sure I've got the right layer selected and then I'm going to search all materials and I'm just going to type in batting and then I'm going to choose quilt batting. So you've got a couple of options there. It's asking for the rotary blade which I've already put in um, to my housing and then it's asking me to load the mat. When you are loading the mat if you are new a little bit of pressure just bend it up a little bit and hit the load button and then it's going to load perfectly each and every time and then we'll wait for the flashing C start flashing which it is and we'll click C to go. So someone's saying that they use transfer paper on their mat when using anything glitter and it protects my mat beautifully. Yes, yeah, so same concept. Uh, great idea. I hadn't even thought of it for glitter because ugh, I hate everyone knows that I despise glitter. In fact, at the moment there's glitter on my couch. I know it came from me, but I don't know why. And everyone keeps asking me, why is there glitter on the couch? And I've got, I have no idea. No idea. Someone's saying fabulous trick, thanks for sharing. I'm, I'm glad that you're um, getting that. Someone else is saying hi Paul, hi to you, whoever you are. Again, if you won't be able to see your name, just uh, click the link in the description and it just gives me permission. So that's cutting um, and we'll get our other pieces uh, ready. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to We've got one of our sort of outer or inner pieces of the fabric, the cotton, with the batting on it. And we're literally going to sew, in the pattern it says to go from long corner to long corner. And I've already done this piece, okay? But what I also do, well what I decided to do, was actually go from the small V's to the small V's as well. So I've got like a, a X and a cross as well. And the reason that I did that, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see, but it just creates a really nice um, kind of boxed pattern. And you can, it's very subtle, but even inside the, uh, the koozie, you can see this sort of beautiful design. And I just thought it was just a nice little touch. So I've done that already on one of the pieces, and we're going to do exactly the same thing to our other piece of cotton with the batting that we've just cut. So let's eject or unload our mat. And I just love it when I cut fabric and everything on the maker because it never looks like it's actually cut anything. And then you just go, boom, in the bin. How amazing, seriously, is that? It is just so beautiful. And we just don't use our machines for fabric enough. Bernie's saying it's not glitter, it's girly sawdust. Exactly, lady sawdust is what I used to call it. So I'm just going to peel that off the mat. And then all I need to do, and I won't do it now, I'll do it off camera, is just peel off that uh, transfer tape, pop on my protective cover, and the mat is back to being a blue, blue mat. So I'll just pop that on there for now, and I'll do that uh, after the live. So Janine's asking, do I use 100% cotton to make these? Yes. So if you are going to uh, look at microwaving them, I was saying Janine, um, personally, I probably wouldn't microwave them only because unlike something like a wheat bag, um, you are going to heat it up for quite some time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, it is going to get hot even though it is cotton. But yeah, 100% cotton fabric, make sure it's 100% cotton batting. And as I mentioned, look out for some batting. It does have a scrim in it, which the scrim may not be 100% cotton, but also um, make sure you're using 100% cotton thread. Now there is a batting, as I was saying, at Spotlight, which is called Wrap and Zap, and that's clearly made to go in the microwave. So again, I just probably to um, 
you know, look out for that. But for me, because I know when I'm like eating on the couch, I heat something up in the microwave in a bowl, it's super, super hot. I grab a tea towel, put it underneath it, or I've got my pillow, uh, you know, cushion from the couch, and I'm eating on top of that. To me, it's just like, here's my koozie, get the hot bowl out, pop it in my koozie, and then I'm good to go. Hopefully that answers your question. Rob was sparkling at the shops yesterday, says Nat. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but I'm sure you guys uh, all know about that. <laughs> so I'm just matching up the little Vs, okay? Because they um, will match up perfectly with the batting, um, but the outer pieces will be slightly um, longer or wider because that's just allowing for the um, seam allowance. And I'm just going to use my pins, and I'm just going to pin on either side of each of these um, spikes, I guess is what I'm going to call them. Oh, I have to go back to this comment. This looks hilarious. Someone's not allowed to use a microwave at their place. I set stuff on fire. <laughs> it's not hilarious, but yeah. So I'm just going to... Um, Pin them nice and far apart as well because we can then just sew straight through. We don't have to unpin as we're sewing. Um, it's weird for me to pin. Normally I'm not really a pinner. I just kind of go for it. But doing the right thing tonight. And I did actually do it this way when I was um, um, when I made my trial one on Monday. I think it was. Also, guys, don't forget Saturday morning, 9:30. I'm going to be on TVSN. So uh, make sure you tune in. If you want to email in and say hi, uh, email producer at tvsn.com.au. You could email them during the, you could email them tonight, tomorrow, whatever. If you are emailing in to say hi, make sure you say it's, um, you know, blah, blah, blah from, from, from Cricket for Australians or something. So I, um, I know who you are, because often it's like, hey, Chris says hello, and I'm not quite sure who, who Chris is. Um, so now what you could also do is uh, you could take a ruler and just draw a line um, for you to sew down as well with your fabric marker. Um, but I'm just going to, you know, free ball it and uh, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be able to um, make it work tonight. So let me just fix up myself. It's falling apart here and we'll get sewing. Now, if for those of you that watched my last sewing video, which was quite a while ago, I did say that my... Um, sewing machine was in desperate need of a service and nothing has changed in that regard. Um, it was acting up this week, but I managed to kind of just play around with some of the settings and it worked, but, um, it may potentially just lose, lose it tonight. <laughs> so I apologize if that does happen. Don't blame me because I'm, I knew this might happen. This is not me just not plugging things in. Oh, there we go. So it was Wendy's band um, from the microwave. Yes, TVSN, it's all about specials. They're always doing lots of deals. So now I'm just going to sew this and I'll sew it as quickly as I can. I'm not going to backstitch or um, at the beginning or the end with this because all of these areas will be caught up in the, um, ultimately in the um, uh, seam allowance. So I'm just going to do the middle pieces first, just from one side to the other. My sewing machine, just for those that are interested, it's a computerized machine. It's a Brother uh, NV610. I don't believe they're actually for sale anymore. Um, but if you can find something similar, they're awesome. It automatically threads, it cuts, it backstitches, it backstitches automatically and everything when I have that set and does amazing things as well as letters and lots of really cool stuff. Um, if you're doing a lot of sewing, it makes a difference to have a really good machine. But these could be made on my first machine until I upgraded was, I think I put, paid $50 from on special at Maya. Um, you don't need an expensive machine. This is purely a straight stitch and any basic uh, sewing machine is going to give you exactly what you want. So now I've done the cross and now I'm just going to go and do that, that oh, sorry, yeah, I'm going to do that kind of X mark along from the long corners to long corners. Starting right at the edge of the fabric as well, um, then going over the batting making sure because I've done that cross, I just want to make sure that this goes right through that X that I've already created. So it's perfectly meets up and then boom, straight through to the other side. You can hear my machines going a bit 
clunk, 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 clunk. And I, I'm, a, I'm a slow sewer, I'm not particularly fast. You can just mm, put your foot down and go hammer and tong, but I kind of like to take my time. It always gets a, ultimately a slightly better result. And there we go, I'm already caught up here. Better. So again, just making sure it just perfectly crosses through the other lines that I've already created. But yeah, perfect for Christmas gifts. Um, I just love these, and they're just so cute, and they just they feel really you know luxurious because with the two layers of batting, the batting's quite thick. I think people often think with quilts, when you make a quilt, that the batting makes it super thick. The batting one layer is actually really quite, um, I'm just going to remove the pins now, is actually quite um, uh, quite thin. So having the two layers just gives it that really nice, thick, um, sort of luxurious feel. So I'm just going to remove those pins. You could leave the pins in for the next step, but I'm just going to remove them now. Um, I'm not going to pin for the next step, but you absolutely can. Just check the comments. Is this a Cricut project? Yes, so this is in Cricut Design Space and it is a maker project. So you need to have a maker or you need to choose maker if you've got multiple machines. Um, what sewing machine am I using? Hopefully you heard my answer uh, on that one. And Nat shared a link, thank you Nat. Um, Okay, so Dorothy has a brother, FS70, and says it's brilliant. So good to see some uh, some comments there. Someone else has six sewing machines. I've got an overlocker as well as this. That's, that's plenty. I don't have enough time. Does it automatically cut the cotton? So if you're asking me if it cuts, my mach the sewing machine cuts the threads. Yes, it does. I've got a thread cutter built in. Um, and Melissa's saying... Oh fruit, I missed it, too busy sewing the mask, I forgot. So you can watch it, anyone that is just joining now, you can go back and uh, can watch it. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is we've got our piece, it doesn't matter how you start, but effectively we're gonna fold it in half, and then we've got these little edges that have kind of been nipped off at the corner. And we're just gonna match those up, and we're gonna sew quarter inch all the way just across there, and across that other side as well. So we'll do that. I'm just gonna move my needle across to where I know it's about quarter of an inch. And this is where I'm not gonna worry about uh, uh, pinning, but you can. Um, but I am gonna backstitch uh, at the beginning and the end. And my machine's doing it automatically. So don't think I'm not doing it, I am doing it. I'm just um, having my sewing machine you can hear it knocking now. Um, definitely got to take it for a, uh, a service. Yes, yeah, so I cut the batting, I cut the cotton uh, fabric, all of it was done on the Cricut Maker. So now I'm just doing the other side. So just take your time, match up those edges. And again, backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Definitely going in for a service. This will be the last sewing that I do on this machine until it's uh, been to the doctor. I've had it for over three years. Um, so I've done that part. So now I'm just gonna do exactly the same for the other piece. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've had it for over three years and it's never had a service. And it's supposed to go once a year, so I'm very naughty. Um, so now I'm just doing exact same thing, folded the other half, the other side in half, and just sewing through those um, those little corners that have been chopped off, and and we're really almost done. Again, do the other side. These are really nice and quick. Um, obviously, if you've got the large fabric mat as well, you can cut more at a time. And as I say, you can really good for getting those scraps, or if you've got fat flats or fat quarters. They're always on sale at Spotlight. You can just pick up some of those randomly. Um, they're perfect for these projects. Thanks, Nat. So Nat's shared the uh, link 
uh, to the project but bowl koozie if you search koozie you'll find it so here we have our two pieces in half now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it the other way okay and we're going to do exactly the same to the other two sides again that have been nipped off of the corner um, that haven't been sewn together we're going to sew them together and we'll do it on both both sides so let's just uh, do that but yeah cut out as many as you can and just sew them all together all at once um, but yeah I was so happy with these I thought I can't wait I might have to make some more I've got so many scraps in my stash of fabric and also if you're looking for the long mats something I found out the other day just randomly um, the long fabric mats it doesn't look like they're available at spotlight but if you actually click on the um, pink fabric mat you can choose the size so either it goes 30 it actually you know we know it's 12 by 12 or 30 point whatever it'll either say 30 by 30 centimeters or 12 by 24 inch so they are there and then we can see we've formed a little kind of bowl shape so I'm just going to do exactly the same on my other piece so folding it the other way and just sewing those two um, pieces that have been kind of chopped off at the side on the corner we'll just sew those together again quarter inch seam pretty standard measurement for most sewing projects and back stitch at the beginning and the end yes so someone's asking if I pre-wash um, for me whether it's sewing whether I'm making a t-shirt um, you know with them um, uh, iron on whatever the case may be if I am going to wash the product at the end of the day I will always wash my fat my the materials so I've washed all of these um, fabrics ahead of time I actually just put them in the dryer they're just 100 cotton just you know lightly on the dryer um, and uh, I do the same with the batting as well because um, it's always better to get the shrinkage done now than when someone goes to put it in the wash and then all of a sudden it shrinks and I think that's because actually I should clarify I always pre-wash these if I'm making a garment like a t-shirt or a whatever or something like this I always pre-wash if I make a quilt I actually don't pre-wash my fabrics and the reason being that I personally love a quilt that when you wash it gets all puckery and kind of cute and bunchy and just lovely so that's when I don't do it because I want to actually have that shrinkage um, the batting from spotlight does it come in sheets or by the meter um, google it I'm not 100% sure actually um, it may have there may be both this I mean there's definitely batting by the meter and if you can get 100% cotton you should be fine the wrap and zap I'm not sure might come in packages um, you might just need to check um, so someone's saying I might need a new needle yeah look I've gone through all of all of that it's it needs a need some attention um, I think to be honest it's probably been sort of misaligned a little bit um, but yeah but thank you because yes it is a brand new needle and it wasn't even sewing the other day and it is now and I think new needle was a big contributor to that okay so now we've got our pieces that they're, they're looking like a bowl and we've got to obviously sew these two together so so we're going to turn one of them pretty side out doesn't matter which okay and we're going to put pretty sides together and uh, in they go and now I'm going to use my wonder clips you could pin as well and we're just going to match up all of the edges and uh, just clip or pin all the way around um, get right down you know get right down in there um, this one is quite bulky so it's you know you're going to want to encourage it just to kind of really sit correctly aligned um, as you're sewing it together and then once it's sewn together you'll be away laughing but just yeah just getting those edges perfectly matched up I love these wonder clips they're perfect for quilting I used to pin everything and I'm a bit slack these days but it's always good to pin you should you're going to get always going to get a better result if you pin where do I get the clips from 
Look, I think these are Wonder Clips, which I got from Amazon. I think there's a um, maybe a birch version or a cheap version available at um, Spotlight. But yeah, Wonder Clips is the um, clover they're made by, which you may, if you're a sewer, you probably recognize. Someone's saying, I have the Cricut Explorer. Can I still access the design to cut the fabric myself? And unfortunately with this design, you can't um, because yeah, look, certainly there's been other scenarios where you've been able to um, um, access a design and um, um, what am I trying to say? And like cut it out of cardstock even and use it as a template. But unfortunately you won't actually even see this one. Um, so yeah, it is a, it is a maker project. Um, what I'm also going to do, well, what I would normally do is I want to leave an opening because I'm basically going to sew quarter inch from one start, one end all the way around. But no, I, normally I would just mark that to say to leave a sort of a two inch mark where I'm going to turn it right side out. Um, just making sure that I've got right sides together now. Um, and but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to eyeball that because I'm going to put this under my needle and just start sewing from this point. But when I get round to this last area, I'm going to sew to around here and I'll stop. We'll turn it um, right side out and then we'll just top stitch all the way around. So I'm just going to remove that clip. Now you might want to do this kind of with the sort of bowl shape underneath you or around the other way, whatever works best for you. And again, definitely back stitching at the beginning and the end. And again, just take your time. Don't, don't rush it. Um, you want this obviously to be, to stay together and um, you know, to look, to look really, really good. Um, I'm just sewing into, into that where those seams meet, pivot, turn it. It's like a nice, really easy shape to sew because it's kind of almost like it's a little diamonds kind of sticking out on the corners. And again, just sew to a quarter inch towards the end of that top of that diamond. And then just pivot again, turn the fabric, take out your wonder clip or your pin. And then off we go again. And so right down to that seam. And pivot again. And then it's just nice straight lines, which is good. No wackadoo curves or anything to annoy us. Again, just down to the quarter inch to the edge and then pivot and off we go. Um, and it doesn't even really matter whether you do a quarter inch seam on, on this particular design, as long as you've got the same seam allowance all the way through, it's going to work out perfectly. So it's not going to, not too bad if you're kind of out a little bit or not. And here we go. Making sure you're catching both sides, of course. If you make these, please share on the page. I love, I never get to see a lot of sewing projects. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. <laughs> I know there's a few of us, but <laughs> I'd love to see them. Whatever you're up to in the sewing world um, or doing with fabric, you know, you're doing applique or faux plique. I've done a video on uh, what I call faux plique, which is your bonded fabric, which you can do on your Explore or Cricut Maker. And uh, applying that to a cushion cover or whatever you might need. And you can use heat and bond, and there's a, a permanent uh, strong bond and a, a light version as well, which you can um, blanket stitch or zigzag around as well. Hey, from Perth, doesn't matter if you're late, um, you can catch up after the live is finished. Um, so almost at the edge. All right, and then I'm just going to back stitch. And cut my threads. Someone else is late as well. Do not worry. Um, you can catch up uh, when we get after the live is over. You'll be able to have a look. Um, so then I'm just going to snip off the corners just to remove some of the bulk there as well. Just make sure you don't snip your stitches. So I'm just going to go as close as I can to those, to that, those stitches without actually cutting that just straight across. 
and that just means when we turn it out it's going to be um, a little bit tidier. You could remove some of the other bulk as well if you wanted to but I'm, I'm not going to bother. Doesn't matter if you cut the stitches obviously when you've done your original zigzag it's just the stitches as you've sewn around it that you don't want to cut. And then we find our little opening which is here. So we have a little opening there and we're just going to turn it uh, right side out. And this is always the fun part. One you've realized you've sewn it together in the right way around um, because I don't know about you but I've certainly been there where I've uh, that's why I checked before where I've ended up sewing you know pretty side to not pretty side and having to use my unpicker and uh, start again. Um, if you know you go gently you don't want to pop those stitches but if you've back stitched at the beginning and the end of um, where you started and stopped you know I'm not being particularly gentle with this just kind of go slow and you know just work with it and turn it right side out. All right and then what I'm going to do is I'm just sort of get in there and just start to shape it with my with my fingers poking out some of the corners. All right just sticking my finger inside and poking out those corners. And then the tool that I didn't mention I don't think I mentioned it earlier it's not essential you can use a chopstick you can use whatever you've got but bone folder I find is really good to just get in there and just poke out those corners. Now don't poke too hard because you don't want to go right through but you just want to get in there and just kind of get that nice little point um, that you just can't you know sort of poke out just with the finger. So just poking those out to their nice little point. Again just be gentle and the last one Okay. Awesome. Okay, so then we pretty much have our little bowl koozie. So that's, I mean, that's basically it. Uh, the next stage or the last stage, and you can see, uh, I might flip it around the other way so you can see, but you can see that sort of that crisscross kind of star design there in the pattern and I just think that uh, just adds a little bit of a touch and it just sharpens those little edges and makes it I think a little bit more um, professional looking. So next step is I'm just going to tuck these my opening in so I can clip that closed. Let's get that I'm just going to clip that closed and I'm just going to grab my Easy Press Mini which, which one of you lucky people will be winning. I'm just going to, this is great for quilting and for uh, small sewing projects. So I'm just going to give my um, project a press before I do the final top stitch. Andrea is saying she loves it. Thanks Andrea, really appreciate it. Birthing your creation is how I've uh, always referred to it. I love it. Yeah, giving birth to your creation, turning it outside in. And Janine saying she hates to have to unpick it. So annoying, but it happens, happens a lot. All right, so that's ready. So I'm just going to give this a nice little press just to try and get those, again, those edges nice and kind of crisp because we want to you can see what I'm doing here. We want to be able to um, top stitch those edges and if they're nice and flat it's going to make our life a lot easier. Just be careful where I've got the easy pr um, my wonder clip. I want to go over the plastic but there you go. So super handy. We'll turn that off and we'll put him back over there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew now with a top stitch I always go, normally I would go as close to the edge as I possibly could. Um, however this is really quite thick now. Um, so it's not only has it got the 
two pieces of cotton folded in on itself that are being sewn together ultimately. It's also got batting, two layers of batting in there. So for this particular project, I probably went, oh, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's pretty close, but you could be just not quite on the edge, just come in a little bit, give yourself a bit of uh, breathing room. And um, that way I think you're just gonna get a better, um, you know, a better result overall. Janine saying she loves her mini for, mini for pressing applique work, perfect for applique. So now I'm just gonna sew all the way around. Now I've pinned or I've clipped where I've got my opening from where I um, birthed my design. And you just, of course, this is where you want to make sure you're really nailing it because you wanna close that opening as you go uh, around and doing your top stitch. So I'm gonna start at this top corner. I'm just gonna go all the way around and then back again. So here we go, under my presser foot. <clears throat> Back stitching at the beginning and the end. And then we're just gonna go all the way around, take out my clip, make sure I'm catching that piece. And then off we go. So again, take your time. Get down to that sort of pivot point and then again just turn and then nice straight stitch all the way up the other side. Get up to that right up to that corner and again pivot and then run another stitch. My stitch length as well just FYI is 2.5 um, millimeters, which I find is really good for garment and these types of projects. For the top stitch, you could, pro you could probably extend that a little bit. Um, up to you. The top stitch doesn't have to, it's not really holding anything together other than that small opening. So you could make it a little bit, um, a little bit longer because it's more decorative ultimately. Just gives it a nice professional touch I think you don't have to do the top stitch well you definitely want to close that opening but you could do that by hand if you prefer um, it's up to you uh, again by doing that top stitch and closing it the way we did it uh, also makes it 100% reversible so there's kind of no um, difference whether we're going um, which way or else and then I'm just going to I'm running into some problems here I think My thread just broke, so let me just, the joys of live sewing, hey? Uh, so let me just re-thread this, and then we'll just finish this off. We're almost done. All right, so that's uh, one great thing again about this machine, it's auto-threading, which I love. Okay. Hello, who's saying hello to me? And then I'm just gonna pick it up from where I left. And again, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And this might actually be where my machine gives up for the night, I think. Let's see if I can get it past this point. those of you that have just joined my machine is well and truly overdue for a service so that's what I'll be doing uh, when I can when I'm allowed to is dropping it off to the uh, sewing machine doctor and uh, getting her getting her thing to make sure she's uh, good for another few years and we're almost done this corner yeah someone's saying they need an auto threading machine it's um oh god it's just so handy and even just the back stitching how many times have we forgot to do that or um 
you know, the cutting the threads as well. It cuts the threads really nice and close, so you don't really have a lot to kind of tidy up. It's really, really good. And here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Back stitch. And we'll cut those threads. So I'm just going to trim off these little threads. So this is why this is so handy, this little trimmer, because it gets so close. I'll just trim off that bit where I stopped and started before. I think, I think this is going to be the outside of my bowl. Oh, some little threads there as well. Let's go around and remove all your threads and give it a nice press again as well. I won't do that now. You've seen me do that once. Um, but there is my little bowl koozie. Um, so Boom, done, uh, again, fully reversible, depending on, uh, you know, what you're feeling like on the day. Um, but there you go. No, so someone's asking if there's different sizes. There aren't in Design Space, it's one size. I've got a pretty standard kind of generous bowl here, um, which fits in really kind of nicely. Um, you can see there, release the threads. Um, fits in sort of really nicely, um, no issues there. And it's, as I say, it's quite a sort of a large, large-ish bowl. Um, obviously you could do a smaller one as well, but uh, yeah, it's just the one size and design space. And there you go. So thanks everyone for joining. I hope you, you like that. I hope you make some of these. Um, if you do, of course, again, share them in the page or any fabric projects, I, I would love to see them. I'll go through the comments later tonight. If you think of anything else, if you've got any questions, post in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Next week, uh, Natalie is up and Natalie's gonna be doing a reverse canvas and it's gonna be a really fun one. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say what it is, but uh, it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, someone's asking what machine I have. This is a brother computerized in the 610, no longer available, but um, you might, you can probably find something very similar. Um, thanks Janine, thanks for joining. So yeah, so join next week with Nat Thursday, 7th of 7 p.m. And of course this Saturday at 9.30 a.m. join me on TVSN. So have a great night, um, have a great week. Uh, for those of you that are in isolation like me, stay strong. For everyone else, I know you're affected as well. Um, everyone, just be well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you very, very soon. Merry Christmas. Bye.